All right, so we're playing some Red Cane. Honestly, I love Blue Smite with Red Cane, just because of how slow he is. Up against a Belveth, so I'm definitely going to start a pot here, because the pot is just going to help us out with our early game. She has a very strong early game. I have a very strong early game. But you need to understand what your strength is. Your strength is not necessarily in your damage, it's in your mobility, so how fast I can move around the map in my pathing. So I have the path smart, I have the move smart. She can fight me. I can fight her if I... Think about Kane like a Riven. You only want to take the fights that you can fight, and if you can't, then run. Riven's like a perfect example of how Kane works early game. Same same concept, same idea if you ever played Riven. Oh you have a really good comp for Red Kane because you have Urgot, Belvat, Zac, who are all very tanky, and then you're also going to have Huey, who's going to be semi-tanky. Obviously, Blue would be good at killing Lucian Huey, but you have to think about these three frontliners, and also our team comp, double ADC, they Lulu, so it's a bit of a front-to-back comp, which means we're going to be playing frontline to backline, which means... I need to play a frontline because we don't have a real frontline. We also have a Zier. We have a lot of backline damage. When you have a lot of backline damage, and well, let's just say a lot more than the enemy's backline damage, that's what you want to look for Red Kane. Alongside with just the fact that Red is good into these champs. Because Red is actually good now. I show you guys my new build. The new Eclipse build. So it's really well with the runes as well, which you can see down here. A lot of you that are curious about the uh, best blue build, I do have videos for that. And there is actually a mix between a red and a blue build, a purple build as well, which is going to be the same thing as this red build. But I'll say that the uh, the blue build is a little bit more mobility centered. So sometimes I go Aeonian boots, basically. I don't really go Aeonian boots on Ross. Ross can go Aeonian boots, but it depends who you're playing into. Like very. Very much depends because no matter what, you're gonna be in the front line. So if you're getting auto attacked by more than two people, like Velvet Lucian, you have to go play the snow caps. And then there's also CC. Like honestly, work treads and play snow caps are just always gonna be like kind of a necessity, I would say. Okay, so Velvet should be either here or there. So I'm just gonna pick it out. Now I'm gonna get my long sword. So I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna look to my get my top side. I don't want to get invaded here. What's up, not Dylan? Dylan and Dylan in the same place. How you doing, my boy? Nice to see you. Yeah. Oh, I think Belveth is in top side because if she was, she would have looked for the early gang top. So I think she's going to be around bot side, so I'm going to ping that out right now. And there she is, she shows. So you can kind of just use process of elimination to determine where enemies are. You're just paying very close attention to like what's going on in the map. Is there a green build? I think so. I gotta I gotta do another one. What happened to Overheal? is only good if you're going like 3 HP items. And I'm actually not trying to go that many HP items because a lot of Kane mains, included myself, like to go damaged. We like to solo carry, so... I'm giving you guys more of a solo carry setup because I think a lot of Kane mains, like not just myself, love solo carrying like I just mentioned. So the way that you solo carry is from having a lot of damage, right? Alright. That was really good by Trisana. Whoa, played. Proto Baguettes. <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> huge, my boy, huge. All right, let me go defend my bot side. No, I know my blue is up. She doesn't know my blue is up, and that's what's important. I might be able to get the scuttle. See, the thing is, if I go for the scuttle and I don't get it, she's going to follow me into my jungle and fight me and get all my bot side camps. So honestly, more than not, it's smarter just not to go for the greedy play like that. Farm my own camp, save my smite for uh, what I have. Just giving her one camp, but defending three, much better idea. I hit the plant though, just in case she didn't rush it. Oh yeah, she, so she went to her top side, which is really good for me actually. Now, normally I would actually advise all of you not to hit the plants unless they know where you're at. But because Way saw me mid and he saw me crossing down towards bot side, they knew where I was at. So if they see you, then you can hit the mid plants. So I was like, alright, why not? But that's a that's a massive thing that I see a lot of low 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 junglers do. Please don't do that. Please never hit the plant unless they know where you're at. Unless they've seen you, never hit the plant. because. The number one rule of being a good jungler is being unseen. Do it the vision. Try and make it so you're in the unknown. Because, I mean, in lower elo, yeah, a lot of times people don't really pay attention to the map. They're not really looking. But in the higher elo you get, they're going to be paying very close attention to where you're at. And they're going to ping you out, and then it's going to make it very hard to gank. And you're going to be like, why can't I gank? How do they know I'm here? Well, because you gave yourself away. So, it's just a good idea to get out of that bad habit early on. But the guys are all right. Letting her have your red? No, I'm not gonna let her have my red. I was gonna let her have the scuttle, not the red. Never give up my red. Try not to give up buffs. But originally, I I, I would have looked to do if she went to my red, but she did not. Pretty good for me. Okay, I think I look to get these. So if I have two smite charges, I'll smite the first one. If I have one smite charge, I'm just gonna hold my smite for the very last one. 
They actually made Grubs a little bit more quality of life. So it's pretty nice. As you can see, they heal, but they don't have the shield, which is really... It kind of nerfs those champions that have really, really good AoE. Kane's kind of one of them. You can see that they all get a pretty significant heal there. Alright. And I can just look to get my top side and my bot side. Now keep in mind, what I'm doing right now is a little bit bad. It's not horrible because I'm staying ahead of Belveth, but I want to make sure that I'm like getting my landers ahead because what did I mention before the game started? Is that I'm playing to be in front of my back line. So my back line is going to be the carry. I'll be able to carry in the front line, but I won't be able to carry in their back line. Like I won't be able to kill Huey and Lucian. Because this is a higher elo game. This is my um, Aster DM account. So playing in this elo, one of the hardest counters to red cane would be getting kited out, getting spaced out, which Huey and Lucian can do very easily. And they also have pretty good feel for it. So it's very important that I can survive longer than their front line in the front line and I can stop their engage from on my back line. And through that, I'll be able to carry but I cannot actually like dive on them and kill them. Unless they just position horribly. I mean, there are certain ways to like bait them into fighting you. Like if they take a fight in the jungle, because the jungle is a very tight space. So if they're fighting me in these tight spaces, then it's usually, that's that's where Kane thrives in. Kane thrives in a jungle, sometimes a river environment because it's just tighter. The tighter it is, the better for Kane. Right. This is kind of dangerous. I don't have any Elveth, but. I thought some of the cube buffs this patch. This is actually gonna be my first game playing Red Kid today, so I wait to answer that, but from what I've seen on the TV, it's all pretty good. But this is actually my first Red Kid Red Kid game today. I played blue a couple times. And honestly, blue felt pretty good. A lot of people were complaining about blue feeling bad. I played him twice and he felt pretty good both games. Nothing too noticeable. A little bit of a nerf on his ulti, but overall, I mean wasn't undeserved, I'll say that. It was not undeserved. Blue King was really OP. I would say Blue King was around like a 54% win rate last patch. That's what a lot of people seem to forget. Is that a 44% win rate? Oh, because uh, Red King's Q just got buffed, we're actually going to be maxing Q. We're not going to be putting 3 in Q, maxing W, like we used to. We uh, just hard maxing Q here. Okay, play vision. I'll look for this and I'll ping out the moments around the top side. So since she has no bot side camps, it comes down to trying to get that base here time. Because her topside camps are there and they're waiting to be farmed. So if she comes over here, which she is, it means that she's delaying resetting those camps. Well, I already reset all my camps. So that's why it's important to take your camps before you go for objectives if you want to maintain a golden XP advantage. Now, there's obviously a lot of nuance to what I'm saying. Like, if there's a kill, you always want to prioritize skipping your camps over the kill. Always. But you have to understand what is a kill and what isn't a kill. Like this, is this a kill? No, because Belveth could have been there, he could have flash, I don't have enough damage, etc. But, you know, what is a free kill? Like, that's something I recommend all you junglers just get better at understanding. And honestly, you just get better at understanding by watching and playing a lot. So the more you watch, the more you play, the more you'll be able to recognize it. And I'll try to point out whenever a free gank is a free gank for you guys, so you understand. Now good. I'll be honest, Twitch chat. Right now. Since I, I, I like to ask this question... It's relevant, but I think right now more than ever it's relevant, and I'll probably ask this question a lot this patch. So your your opinion might vary, so don't feel like your your, your opinion solidified in stone or anything. But um, what would you guys say is your favorite form right now for Kane, red or blue? And I would I would ask mostly for the people that are playing Kane, but if you also watch Kane, what what do you enjoy to watch more? I think red Kane's actually very fun to watch. He's uh, actually good. And he actually feels pretty good right now, so. I, uh, not what take. Wow, this Azir came in so clutch. Nice. Wait, that was so well played by Azir. Look how many orbs I got from that, too. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get the reps now. We get a big advantage, we also get a clips. Blue, blue, blue. Okay. Red, blue, blue. Okay, so you guys are still all a, a bunch of blue fans. I'm actually very curious. I want. Okay, so this is gonna be a YouTube video. All my YouTube viewers. I want you guys to check back on this video in maybe like a week or two. And I want you, if you see yourself, I want you to let me know if your opinion still stays the same. 
So you guys in YouTube chat can answer as well. I I'm actually curious. I think a lot of those blue fans will vastly change to red fans. Dude, it's not that Blue Kane isn't amazing. It's not that he isn't fun. It's not that he isn't super cool. I think a lot of you newer Kane mains haven't been around long enough to see how awesome Red Kane really is. Like Red Kane at its peak, or Red Kane truly is a bruiser, you know, a drain tank, he is one of the most fun. Like, okay, I don't know if a lot of you have played him, but Aatrox is like a perfect rendition of like how Ross plays like, but let's imagine more aggressive. Because obviously Ross is better than Aatrox, I think everyone knows that. Ross is better than most champs in the game because... See, okay, okay, can I can I say something? Because not a lot of people seem to understand this very simple, yet um, you know, kind of over-the-head concept. Is that Blue Kane is one of the best, if not the best, assassin in the game. And Ross is one of the best, if not the best, bruiser in the game. And the reason for this is, is because you're peak in your first form. You have to work to get your form. So you're overcompensated in a lot of strength, like a that's amount of strength, for how weak you are in the early stage of the game, right? Well, my bot lane's getting fragged on. I gotta go help him out here. But a lot of people don't seem to understand that, yes, by default, red and blue cane will be stronger than the majority of champions in game, if not all the champions of the game. It's kind of like a scaling concept, like how Kale, level 1, is one of the weakest champs in the game, but level 16, she's one of the strongest champs in the game, right? No. People say I'm toxic. I'm not. I think I get my blue form there. Don't worry. I know all of you in chat. They were like, "Oh, I just, you want to see your red cane game? I will go red this game." Because if you guys haven't seen, there is a purple cane build where I do this exact setup, except I choose my blue form instead of my red. So don't worry, I'm choosing my red form. Don't worry, guys. I, I, I will choose my red form. I just felt like it was a smart gank to pull off. It was good. Azir's giga fed. And he's going to have a lot of value. So. Don't worry, I promise. I'll go red. Alright. We have 40 seconds on the objective, so I can just farm my top side and then reset head on over. So, right now, second item, usually what I want to do is I want to look at their team and be like, okay, if they're stacking armor, I can go Cleaver. If they're not, I'm going to get Chojin. I honestly slept on Chojin a lot. I'll be one of the first people this up there to admit, I 100% slept on Chojin. I felt Chojin wasn't that good of an item, and then I started running, and I was like, this is a pretty damn good item. So, I will say Chojin definitely is on par with Cleaver in terms of strength. So, if they're not stacking armor, I will go Chojin over Cleaver. And if they are stacking armor, I'll go Cleaver over Chojin, vice versa. I think the reason why I didn't like Shojin so much is because Red King just had no damage. It was useless. So now the fact that you have damage and you can actually like utilize what Shojin does, it was pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, I just felt like I'd, I'd, I'd address that, because I know a lot of people were trying to Shojin pill me. Karis, my one, you try Shojin. Karis, my Shojin to this, Shojin that. Well, I've heard you guys out, and you were right. Shojin is good. It just, I think for the time being, he just, it wasn't. Now it feels really good. Nice, huge. Fingers crossed they don't have F15. Fingers crossed they don't have F15. I really want to play Red King today. Ravnus had to go to Red King. No, we're going to be stepping away from all the team ads because Riot did a very despicable, gross thing to Kane. I, I would want to be the first one to save. So, if you guys don't know, completely removed and gutted the interaction where you could use your Tiamat or Profane or, you know, whatever in the middle of your Q, which a lot of champions can do. They can, they can match it with their abilities. You know, Aatrox can use it, um, I believe with the Uh, Red actually can use it in the middle of his Q. A lot of champions have been able to use Tiamat or Profane in the middle of their abilities, and they still can. Kane specifically cannot anymore. They actually decided, hey, Kane, you know what? You're not allowed to do that. And it is a uh, very... Stupid, uneducated. It is a very childish nerf 
it is like I understand a nerf, but that is just like a very targeted. That's the, one of the first times in my history, nine years history, being challenger, ten year history of playing the game that I've ever seen that much of a targeted nerf. I haven't seen this much of a targeted nerf since the better nerf Irelia memes back in the day, way back in the day. I'm sure anybody who would used to play League like seven, eight years, nine years ago knows what I'm talking about. But no, honestly, I'm not complaining that Kane got nerfed. I 100% think he deserved nerfs. He was a very strong champion, and I always stand by that statement. But I think the nerfs that they did choose was just it was despicable. It was, it was the fact that they actually went through with that, and the fact that a, a group of rioters presumably agreed to that as a viable solution to what Kane was. It's it's just gross, man. It's, Oh, yeah, yeah, I trolled this fight so hard. I had a W mid-air. That's my bad. over here. Yeah, that was my bad. I had to smite ult to bail myself out there. Wait, what? Oh, she passed reset. Okay. I almost have children. Same reason they removed the prowlers, try and lessen the skill knowledge gap. Oh, 100%. Yeah, a lot of people that don't watch content creators and don't like play the game a lot, they don't understand that interaction, so they were never utilizing it. So the K mains that were enlightened, the ones that were climbing all the LP for free, a lot of K mains that were using the other build, a lot of the. Honestly, there was a lot of petty K mains out there. They were very angry that people were running profane, and they were also like kind of advocating the nerfs of it. But at the same time, just imbalance. You can't, you can't do something like that in a game and just have other champions that are also exploiting that same exact pro exact problem. If it's such a problem, then all champions should not be allowed to do it, but they are. And a lot of them do it a lot better than Kane. Like Rengar, for certain, uses Profane a lot better than Kane. I won't even say Profane is, you know, the best item for Kane. It's definitely the best item for a lot of other assassins that actually need it. The reason why I just liked it for Kane, because Honestly, it was a, a, a satisfying interaction to use, and if they nerfed the item, sure, I would have been fine with it. Probably still would have used it, but it's weird. Sorry, I definitely want to get that vent out of the way, because that, that is something that really rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm glad a lot of the game mains are speaking out about it. I'm glad that they're not being silent. This is something that I think Riot just trying to like sweep under the rug. Like, they just want to move on with this. But... I feel like every now and then there'll be um, there'll be nerfs and changes in the game that'll just cause like a public outcry that it's like what are you doing? This is one of those moments. Not a lot of people will speak up because they don't like Pain and they think he deserved every nerf in the game, but it's not just about Pain. It's about just how champions should be allowed to like this and have similar interactions, you know? Everything. Nice, got him. Stop my flow. Profane didn't nerf? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. If they wanted to nerf Profane, I would be all for it. I thought it was an OP item as well. But other people are going to be abusing that item. Well, we're not allowed to. I think the last time I saw somebody get this upset about a nerf was... I remember Double is getting very upset about them hard nerfing QSS, where it removed a lot of, like, the interactions. Like, you used to be able to QSS um, Z-Ult, and there was, like, a lot of other things you used to be able to QSS, and they kind of got rid of that. And... They, they, they hard gutted the ADC roll for a long time. I remember Double Ups was very upset about that. I think this is like a close moment for me where I'm that l level of upset. But see, the thing is, is that no matter what, I'm gonna keep playing the game. I'm just gonna adapt. I'm gonna give you guys a new build that I am right now. But at the same time, I think that you should be more upset about that, not just Because if, if it could happen to Kane, it could happen to any champ, right? No one likes when their champion gets targeted, like singled out like that. I see. Always important to make sure that you uh, knock them up and stop them from being able to enter like that. I got a big W here. 
And I would like to say, it does definitely feel like I have a lot more damage with the buffs. This is uh, one of my first games of playing this in rank. Oh my god, yeah, that is some, that is some damage right there. That is some damage. Okay, the, the red buffs, sorry to get off track so much, but red buffs definitely feel good, and this build definitely feels good. The next item, um, at this point, honestly, it's just about survivability. Eclipse Shoujin, it's cheap, it's efficient, and it's giving you everything that you want. It's giving you HP, it's giving you damage, it's giving you ability haste. Like, there is not a better build to solo carry than this build, guys. Like, you know, you guys wanted a damage build to solo carry. You know, this is the best I can do without Profane being in the game. Because obviously, if Profane was still in the game for Red Cane, I would honestly have incorporated a Profane Red Cane build. But this build still works out really well. So don't feel like he still can't do what he does. And he does it pretty damn good. So I think definitely now we can look to maybe go like a stance or maybe even a paw. Now, I will tell you guys, huge, 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 uh, what's the word? What's the word? Um... Something to like be like cautious about. I forget the word. Disclaimer. Yeah, huge disclaimer. When you're playing that stance, Red Cane, you cannot use your ults how you normally use your ults. So normally, I always recommend recommend all my viewers if you're playing Red Cane, hold on to your ult as long as possible. Think about like kind of like your friend mirror or something, right? And with Red Cane, I would say that's not the case. But that stance, that is. Okay, I'm gonna go inside so I can actually just dodge that ulti. My team is hard zoned off for me here, which is really bad. And, um, Dak is solo 1v3 in my backline. That is scary. I need to just, honestly, I, did, I need to just peel. What I was going to say is that normally I do recommend all of you guys to think about Red Kin ult as a Trinimir ult, but with that stance, you need to be ulting a lot earlier. You need to ult at like 40% HP. But without that stance, I'd say like 10-20% HP. Sometimes you can go 5% if you're very, very, like, paying very close attention. Like, you're like, okay, there's no anti-heal, they don't have ignite, etc. You can ult at, like, 5% and really get risky with it. Especially with, like, a fully stacked conquer. Fully stacked conquer, red can ulti. Beautiful. But, yeah, it always gets me angry. I can always tell which viewers are my viewers and which, which Kane players just play Kane. Because if I see a Kane, like, hit one combo, ult immediately, and they're like, oh man, Ross does nothing. You gotta play Ross smart. You gotta play him like a drain tank, so... Ideally, you want to be taking, like, double the amount of your HP in a fight for damage. That's how you know you're doing good. So you're going to die a lot. Listen, you're going to die a lot if you're playing Red King. As you see, I've died a lot. Uh, see, the reason I've died a lot is because I've made mistakes thinking that my team could kill the back and hurry up to me. Because I'm zoning 1v3, which is a perfect job for a frontliner to do. But the fact that my backline isn't reaching their backline before I die is a little bit problematic. Because the second I'm off the screen, I don't have as much control. So in order to have control as a frontline uh, team fight carry, we could say, I need to be able to stay alive. So I just need to position better. I need to position closer to my team and fight them and through them instead of away from them. But I will say, me zoning is not bad. Working, working, like we're winning. My old band held me back. Unstoppable. Doesn't the new red heal apply before the recast so you have more time? Wait, what do you mean by that? It applies before the recast? Did I miss something? Gotcha. Ran out of little thingies, didn't ya? Alright, nice. Huge. You definitely have damage, guys. Definitely have damage. Nice. Oh, there's the game. Well, GG's. Hope you boys enjoyed. Uh, I probably would have went Death Stance, and then I probably would have got Ma and maybe GA last item. Hope you boys enjoyed. That's how you do.